KAZ Radio, Cleveland's online inspiration station. And how you doing, Michelle? I am doing great today. Amen. It must gonna be a real good good show today for pr- for praying for, on the prayer connection. Anytime Amen. you call, you go through an attack. Anytime that you are attacked. You better believe there's a blessing attached to, to that attack. Come on. If you're not doing nothing for God, you ain't doing nothing for the kingdom of yeah, God, yeah. the devil is not going to bother you. He's not going to try to distract you with all kinds of situations and all kinds of circumstances and all kinds of crazy stuff. So I know I must be on the right lane today and what we're going to pray today. Amen. Amen. God is so good. God is so good. So. To put that in a nutshell, I'm so excited today that you logged on to the prayer connection where you make a connection with God. Or you could even say that you're making a connection with heaven. You make a connection wherever is in the kingdom of God. You are making a connection on the prayer connection with your sister in Christ, Michelle Rice. Today, we're going to... Have a, we're going to pray like we always do for half an hour. But before we start today, this is a little, one of the longer, we're going to be doing a longer show at the beginning of the month and then our regular half an hour at the end. So today we're going to do a little bit more uh, teaching, just a little bit, because I would like to give you a little prayer nugget. You know, you need a prayer nugget to help you in your intercession, help you in your prayers, help you in your petitions towards God. So I hope you have your Bibles all set and ready. Amen. And the scripture for today that we're going to start with is in Matthew 18. Amen. Matthew 18. I'm reading out of the King James Version Bible. Okay. It reads. Ready? It reads. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Yes, the scripture says, Verily I say unto you, this is Jesus talking to his disciples. He said, Whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Our prayer nugget is come right from that verse. It says, Whatsoever. Whatsoever means it, it covers anything and everything. I don't care what the devil is doing. I don't care if he's coming against your, your, your finances. I don't care if he's coming against your home, your children. I don't care if he's coming against your marriage, your ministry. I don't care what it is. This My Bible tells me whatsoever you bind. I'm talking about binding your, the enemy. You have an enemy today. The Bible says that Satan is as a roaring lion. He's your adversary. And he as a roaring lion walketh about to and fro, seeking whom he can devour. You have to resist him steadfast in the faith. So this prayer nugget today is going to help you. It's going to help you. The Bible says whatsoever. That includes anything. I don't care what circumstance. I don't care what situation you're going through. I don't care what problem it is. I don't care if it's what trial, what tribulation, what adversity. My Bible tells me if the, if, if the devil is backing up that, 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 that attack, whatsoever you buy, if you bind him, he will be bound. It covers everything. Whatsoever, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever, and that word bind, what does that mean? That word bind has many different uh, terms that connect with the word bind. You can say whatsoever you disallow on earth shall be disallowed in heaven. Whatsoever you forbid on earth shall be forbidden in heaven. You can even say, Satan, I don't even give you permission. You have to give your permit. He has to come to you to get legal access. So, it's, it's, so, if, you, so if you say, if I bind you, that means I disallow you. I forbid you. I superimpose my power on your power. I stop you dead in your tracks. I bind you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. I come against you in the name of Jesus. And when you bind the enemy, heaven backs you up. Whatsoever you bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. And then it goes on to say, Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. But the Amplified Version tells a little bit different. It says, Whatsoever you bind on earth is already bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is already loosed in heaven. Already. Already. It's already done. You're not making up no new rules. There are terms of engagement. There are terms for the battle. You can't make up rules as you go. You have to bind whatsoever is already, already is the key, already bound in heaven. You have to, so how do you find out what's bound in heaven? You got to read your word. 
<laughs> you gotta read, you gotta find out what God is saying. You gotta find the agenda of heaven, the will of God, the plan of God. Find out what the Bible is saying about your sickness and disease. Find out what the Bible is saying about your marriage. Find out what the Bible is saying about your ministry. You find it. You look through the scriptures and find out what the word of God is on the subject. Amen. You find out. Because if you don't know what's already bound in heaven, you have no legal authority to bind nothing. You see, you can't just willy nilly, haphazardly, at random stuff, ban stuff. I ban this. I ban. Come on. You can't ban stuff. Find out whatever you want to ban. You got to read. You got to bind what's already bound in heaven. You have to lose what's already loose in heaven. That's why prayer and the word of God goes hand in hand. Pr binding and losing, which is a key element of prayer, it is right in tune with, with, with the word of God. If you don't know the word of God, if you don't know the law of God, then you are ignorant of what to bind. So that, that means the devil can just do what he wants to do because you don't really know what is, is it is illegal. So you only do what is legal. The Bible says in Psalms 149 that you... It said you bind the kings with chains and you bind the nobles with fetters. This is a judgment already written. That means you execute judgment. Let's look at that right quick. You ex you you find out what the word of God is, and that is what you can bind. Let's look at Psalms 149. It says, Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. It says to bind their kings with chains. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute upon them the judgment written. To execute upon them the judgment written. To execute, to execute, to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor of all the saints. Praise you the Lord. So you binding the kings and binding the nobles. Who is the kings and nobles? Any ranking of the enemy. My Bible tells me that we don't rest against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. These are the kings and nobles this scripture is talking about. Any devil, any demon, any satanic force, any spirit of witchcraft of, of, or, 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 or of occultism, anything dealing with the enemy, it says you can bind those kings. Those rankers, high rankers, you can bind their nobles with fetters of iron when you pray the word of God. When you bind and loose, according to Matthew 18, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. So you bind their kings with chains and you bind their nobles with fetters of iron. It says to execute upon them the judgment written. You, ex you execute the judgment written. You execute it. You execute what is written. Remember when Jesus was, was confronting the enemy on, on, on the mountain? And, and every time the enemy came against him, he says, it is written. It is written. It is written. So you have to do like Jesus. You have to execute the judgment written. Don't make up nothing. Don't make up your own rules now. Don't make up stuff. You, you get this word that says, it is written, Satan. You can't continue to attack my body with the spirit of arthritis. You cannot continue to plague me with high blood pressure. You cannot continue to plague me with all these high glucose levels and sugar diabetes. You cannot continue to attack my heart and give me heart palpitations and all kinds of uh, uh, heart attacks and, and strokes. You can't do that. I'm going to execute the judgment written. I'm going to execute what's already written. What is written? What is written? The Bible says, by his stripes you are healed. By Jesus' stripes you are healed. So I'm going to execute the judgment written. I'm going to execute. I'm going to carry out what God has already said about my body. My Bible says, by his stripes I am healed. Jesus took my infirmities, bore my sickness and diseases, and with his stripes I am healed. That's how you execute the judgment written. You execute what is written about healing. Jesus is Jehovah Rophe, the Lord thy God that healeth thee. So you have to execute the judgment written about healing. Let's say you're going through poverty. Or this is a whole bunch of lack in this season. You know, like feel, feel like things are not coming together in your finances. You have to execute the judgment written. What is written? It says, God shall supply all of my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That's the written judgment. It's in the Bible. It's according to the scripture. On earth as it is in heaven. It is written that... No, 
about, about lack. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but those that seek the Lord will not lack any good thing. That is the judgment written. I have to execute the judgment written. You are the jury, the judge, and the, and the jail warden. So if you see a spirit of poverty and lack, the Bible says you bind, you bind it up. Say, how you do it? Satan, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I bind the spirit of lack and poverty in the name of I bind it up. I disallow you to continue with this lack in my life. I forbid you. I veto your assignment. Your assignment is to take me down to nothing. I veto that, ex- that assignment. I veto that assignment against my finance, against my bank account, against my increase, against my overflow. I, I bind that. I disallow you. It is improper. It is unlawful for you to continue stealing my finances. Finances. The ex- you execute the judgment written. If the thief be caught, he got to restore sevenfold. That's the judgment written. You, you so, so you're taking the word of God and you using it in your in your warfare. Body and loose is part of warfare, which is part of prayer. Executing the judgment written. Now let's get back to Matthew, our key scripture, before we pray today. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. It's already done. You just carrying it out. Amen. You are the law enforcer. You, you're the policeman in the kingdom of God. You don't make up the, do, do police make up the laws? Do they ever go about their everyday making up laws and rules? No. They just enforce what's already the law is. So you have to enforce, you're the you're police now. God says, I'm deputizing to you today to be a police. You, you, I'm deputizing you. You carry out the law. You carry out God's agenda. You carry out God's plan. You carry out God's will. You carry out his word on earth. You are a policeman. You enforce the law. You don't make up the law. You enforce it. And if you don't enforce the law, then the devil is going to run roughshod over you, your family, your health. He's going to keep on tearing you down till you just completely die. He's going to continue to pilferage your marriage till you in divorce court. He's going to keep on attacking your kids until they be on drugs and they just die in their sin. If you don't execute the judgment written, if you don't enforce the law, Satan is not going to back up. You got to back him up and you back him up with the word of God. The word of God. The word of God. You back him up in with the word of God. He's coming against your ministry. You back him up with the word. You back him up in the corner. Not him back you up in the corner. He says, take your sword of the spirit and begin to wail that sword. You use that. Be skillful. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved or workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You study to find out your rights. Find out what you what's the law. Then you take it by force. The kingdom of God suffers violence. And the violent take it. Hallelujah. Take it by force. Take it by force. Take your kids back. The enemy has bound up and kept on crack cocaine. And kept them in the streets. Kept them on drugs. You bind them up. You take authority. My Bible tells me in Luke 10. He says, I've given you power. Over all the power of the enemy. And nothing by any means will hurt you. You could tread on serpents and scorpions. He's not giving you power over all the power of the enemy. I don't care what he's doing. He's trying to intimidate you. It's with fear. Because he knows you got power. He, he knows you do. Because Jesus gave it to you. Jesus says, I give unto you power over all the power of the enemy. I give you power to tread upon serpents, scorpions, and all the power of the... He knows that. But if you keep you ignorant, if you keep your nose out of this book, to keep you not reading the Bible, you just willy-nilly tipped on through the tulips, it's all going to be all right. I'm saved. Jesus is going to do it. Jesus ain't going to do it. He giving you the authority to do it. Why are you making Jesus do something he already did? He already said it is finished. On that cross, he said, it's finished. I'm not doing no more. I'm giving you authority. I, I'm in you. Jesus says, he's in us. Jesus says, all power has been given unto Jesus. All power. Now, if Jesus is in us, and Jesus got all power, that lets me know I can tap into the power. If Jesus is in me, and in you, if you're born again, and Jesus says, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Jesus said that. Jesus is in me. So what they, what they, what they, what's that telling me about me? That tell me I can tap into that power at any given moment by speaking a word. I just tap in, tap in. Somebody say tap, Holly. When you're going through a trial, just say tap, <laughs> tap is in there. The treasure is in you. Just tap. Sometimes we have not been tapping into that power. 
We've been tapping to that anointing, tapping into that strength, tapping into that glory. Tap is in you. The kingdom of God is in you. Not a little bit of Jesus. Somebody else a song where it says, I just need a little bit more, little bit more Jesus. You don't need a little bit more Jesus. You need the Jesus in you to stand tall. The Godhead is in you. The Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. The full Godhead is in you. In me as a born again believer. All you need to do is tap into that power. Just tap. Amen. It's so much. And I don't want to overload you at one drop. But as we're going to continue, we're going to continue on teaching on prayer. And the, the first nugget today was binding and loosing. We only talk about the binding part. You got to know you can stop the devil in his tracks. He don't have to run over you no more. He don't have to run over you. He don't have to take be Lord over you. You got one Lord, and his name is Jesus. It's not him. So today as we pray today, we're going to pray for our families today. And we're going to use this skill. We're going to use this, this key of the kingdom. The Bible says, I give you keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth. is see, That's a key. A key locks and unlock. You lock up the devil. You lock up his antics. You lock up every trick, everything he got. You lock him up. Lock him up. Lock him up. You, you the jail war. You got the keys, babe. You got the keys, sis. You got the keys, mother. You got the keys, my brother, my father. You got the keys today. Will you use your keys? Hallelujah. Binding and loosing is a key element in prayer. And we're going to use it today as we pray for our families. That's what's on my heart today. God put it on my heart. And you are most effective. You pray what the Holy Spirit wants you to pray. Don't try to be all d a deep wonder. If he didn't tell you to pray for the terrorists today, and when you wake up, that's not what you're supposed to say. If he told you, oh, you pray for the presidential race, pray for that. Whatever he tells you to pray, pray that, and you'll be effective. Don't make up your own prayer list. I know we got prayer lists, and I know I'm not against prayer lists. I used to have prayer lists, but I got to the point that I say, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I'm coming to the throne of grace. I, come, I We're going to pray right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, we're coming to the throne of grace to obtain mercy, oh God, to find grace to help in a time of need, Father God. We're not coming in on our own agenda today, God. We're not coming in what we want to pray, what we want to say, God. It's not about us. It's not about me. It's not about them. It's not about her. It's not about him. It's not about nobody. It's about what you want me to pray today. When I pray, Father God, what you want me to pray today, I will be effectual. Father God, your word said that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The effectual fervent. It's effectual. It's powerful when I get, when I get your mind, God. So I'm going to ask you right now, Father, give us the mind of Christ on what to pray for today. You already dropped in my heart to pray for the families. I need you to be pacific in me, Lord. Show me the, tra the, the strategic element in this warfare. We're going to read today, God, I believe by faith, through our prayers, God. Somebody's praying with me, Lord. I believe somebody's praying me right in Euclid, right in the city of Cleveland. There might be somebody praying today in Columbus. There might be somebody praying in Pittsburgh today. It might be somebody praying across the waters in another continent, God, in another another, another, in another, uh, another zone, in another territory far off, God. For whoever is praying today, God, we're coming together on one accord. Father God, you said we're two or three. We are gathered together in my name. There I am in the midst of them. You said we touch and agree on anything. We can have what we say, God. In the name of Jesus. So, Father God, we're coming in today. We're coming again with the, with glory today. We're coming in with the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, we're coming in with the great intercessor. The great intercessor, the Holy Ghost. Uh, he's the Holy Ghost power. We're pulling on it right now, Lord. Uh, we put it on Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost. Uh, Holy Ghost power. We need the Holy Ghost today. Uh, I need the Holy Ghost, God. We need the Holy Ghost. Everybody's praying. Uh, we need the Holy Ghost. Uh, we don't want to pray on our own. We don't want to be on our own. On God, we calling on the Holy Ghost. Uh, we need Holy Ghost power today, God. We need Holy Ghost wisdom, Holy Ghost strategic plans. Uh, we need the blueprint for prayer, God. We need the Holy Ghost, uh, not by might nor by power, but by your spirit. We need the Holy Ghost, uh, the Holy Ghost, the third person of the God here. We need him. Uh, I recognize that, God. I'm not trying to act like because I'm an intercessor in my church. Oh, forget all that. It ain't about if I'm an intercessor in my church. Uh, I could have been praying for 50, 60 years. It don't matter. Today is a new day and today we draw on the power of the Holy Ghost uh, today to give us the grace to pray. Hallelujah. Give us the grace to pray. There's a grace and anointing. Uh, 
There's an anointing to pray. There's an anointing to intercede. There's an anointing to make petitions. There's an anointing. Give us an anointing. There's an anointing. God, we need a new anointing to pray and an anointing. Release. I feel it right now. There's an anointing. Oh, A new anointing all over the airways. Everybody's praying. Everybody in their homes, in their cars. Everybody logged on to KAZ Radio. Oh, the inspiration station of the nation. Oh, God, release a new anointing. Oh, there's an end time anointing. We in the end time of the year. Father, if you want some things you want done at the end of the year. So we need that end time anointing, God. That end of the year anointing. God, when I believe, God, you want to do some great things for we, us, and our families at the end of the year. No, God, there's an anointing on the 12th month. There's anointing on 12. There are 12 apostles. 12 was 12 disciples. It's 12 months of the year, God. It's 12, 12, 12. It's 12 numbers on the clock. It's something. It's 12. That 12 is a number of government and legislation. 12 is a number of government and legislation. So that means in this 12th month of December, which is a la- you wanted to govern some things. You want to put the things in alignment. There's some legend, something that you want to speak in legislation in the prayer realm. In this last month of the year, it's the number 12 is very powerful, oh God. I thank you, Lord God, for showing us that the 12 is very important. So today, God, as we continue to pray for our families. Oh, God, you want to put our families back in order, oh, God. You want to put our families in order. They've been out of order for too long, God. Father God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, for every father, every father over his family, God. Let them take their rightful places uh, in the household, oh, God. In the name of Jesus, God, I pray right now, God, that every man will stand strong in his home, God. In the name of Jesus, stand strong and take the reins. Take the reins. And mother not supposed to take the reins. The key is not supposed to take the reins. It's the man. They take the reins. Take the reign of the house. Uh, when you you put Adam in the garden first, then you put Eve. You didn't put Eve first. You put Adam in the garden to tend it and to and to to tend the garden and to keep it. You intended for that man to be the head of the house. Uh, so we pray in the day, God, uh, you will gird up every man. Every man that got a family, God. We need family men. We need men that take care of their family. We praying for the men, God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. You said a man don't work, he don't eat. I'm praying for every man that was wherever man you give him a job. They don't have a job today, God. If they're going through right now, I pray, God, that you open up the doors of employment for every man. He can take care of his family. Every man, God, give back the man of the household. Give them their esteem back. Oh, the enemy comes against the man. He knows if I come against the head, I got the family. So, God, I'm praying for every man in this household. Let him take strong. Let him take his stance. Let him take his stance. Let him take, let him take a strong stance in the home. Father God, strengthen him. Father God, let him be strong in the Lord and the power of your might, God. In the name of Jesus, strengthen him with strength from on high. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, I, I remove every crutch. I remove everything he's leaned on. The only thing you have to lean on this time and this season is leaning on the Holy Ghost. You said, men, you said, you said, you said in your word, God, it's better to trust in the Lord and put confidence in man. It's better to trust in the Lord and put confidence in princes. You said, trust in the Lord and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God and he will direct that path. Let the man trust and lean on Jesus. Uh, trust and lean on God. Give that man wisdom. Give the man wisdom God. Oh God in the name of Jesus give that man wisdom. You said if any man lack wisdom let him ask of God and he will give him liberty bread if not and it shall be given him. Give him not to understand how to lead that household. Take his rightful stand. I decree and declare God that every home there will be a man to take the reign the reign the R-E-I-G-N-S the reign of the house take his kingless stance uh, take your king. I speak it to you. I release the word. Take your stand in your house and take authority in the name of Jesus. Oh, nana masia no 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 kosha. Ya no 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 korashata. God, we pray for our children, oh God. As we pray for the families on this on this prayer 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 time. We pray for all the children, oh God. You will protect them, God. I plead the blood of Jesus over every child. I plead the blood of Jesus over every 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 child, every toddler, oh God, every kindergartner, everyone in elementary, everyone in uh junior high school, everyone in high school and college age, all the children, God. 
I plead the blood of Jesus over them. And Father, we're going to use the tool that we learned today. We learned about binding and loosing, Father God. So I bind the enemy's assignment against our youth. I come against it in the name of Jesus. I bind the powers of darkness. I'm coming against every trick, every wild, every scheme against our little ones. Have them caught up, caught up in perversion. I bind the spirit of perversion amongst our youth. I come against that demonic spirit. Right now, the enemy has a, he, 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 he always moves in perversion and fornication and adultery. But the new thing out amongst the youth is oral sex. I come against the spirit of perversion. It's a diet, but it's a, it's a trick. Tell them where you're not really having sex. You, it's an easy way out. You don't, you don't contract no disease. I rebuke that spirit. I rebuke that demon right now. I come against the spirit of perversion. I bind the spirit of perversion amongst our youth. I bind the spirit of fornication. I bind the spirit of adultery. I bind the spirit of lesbianism, homosexuality, that lifestyle. I bind it in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. We rebuke you right now by the power and the authority of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you today that we have prayed for the men of the household in the name of Jesus and our youth. Each time we come together, we're going to pray more and more. But today, God, I thank you for starting off this month with praying for the families. Father God, we give you praise. We give you honor. We thank you that you already always hear us when we pray. Now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you right now that everyone that listens to this broadcast will continue the prayer vigil in their homes for the rest of the year, even in 2016. Amen? And if you don't know Jesus Christ, your personal Savior, just call upon his name. The Bible says, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. In Jesus' name. Always in your prayer saying, in the name of Jesus. It gives it authority and it makes it legal. In Jesus' name. Well, saints, brothers and sisters, I will see you next time on the prayer connection where you make your connection with God. I will see you next time on the prayer connection where you make a connection with heaven. I'll pray for you. You pray for me, your sister in Christ, Michelle Rice. Thank you. Bye-bye. Love you. And most of all, Christ loves you. Amen. Amen. Amen.